take a little trip with me and hopefully you can see how the hood, suburbs, and main street are all connected. Enough respect, I mean, we network across the globe because it's a global market in case you didn't know. And since we all about information flow, let me be the first one to welcome you to Tech Zone with Paul Armadeus Lane. Let's talk tech because technology changing the game. It's all good in the hood. It's everywhere. Now let's get to the show because we live on air. Yeah. Hello and welcome to this edition of the Tech Zone. Hope you're doing well. Hope you're doing fine. We're back after a couple of week hiatus. You know, I decided what was going on with the hurricanes in Florida and Houston that it just wasn't right for me to come on and and talk about things other than that because it was time for the nation to, to pause and to really reflect of, of what's going on. I didn't want to seem insensitive or anything, but but I am back and I'm so happy to have you on the show. I'm your czar of technology, Paul Amadeus Lane. On our show today, we're going to be talking about cybersecurity, different technologies out there that can help us to keep our identity safe. We know what happened with Equifax, over 140 uh, members out there who um, got their information breached. And that's from a company that's supposed to be reporting our credit history. And they may be the cause why we got the raw credit. Go figure, right? We're also going to talk about what's going on in the gaming world, Xbox One X, some of the hot titles that's uh, going to make a splash at this fall. So you don't want to miss what we have in store. Remember, you can always connect with me, Paul Amadeuslane.com. Would love to chat with you on social media, all those great platforms. That's how you can reach me. Don't forget, you can also catch up on the episodes on demand video wise. Go to my YouTube channel. You can check it out audio wise, iTunes, iHeart, uh, Spreaker. You can find me anywhere. So check me out, please. Really, really appreciate all the support and the love that I've gotten over the months with the tech zone. Well, we're going to start our show today talking about a trend that we have seen when it comes to live TV viewing. Now, there was a report that was done from our great friends over the Consumer Technology Association that showed 55% of millennials are not watching live TV. They watch on-demand content. Again, I've said this before. My man Sean and I, you know, we watch The Man in the High Castle. That's not live TV. That is on-demand viewing. We're starting to see uh, just a lot of trends toward that because you can watch it whenever you want to. But one of the things that this study really highlighted was that those who watch on-demand content, 73% of them start watching recommended content. I know my wife does this. Whenever she watches something on Hulu, when it talks about recommended videos, she she takes a look at it and watches. So 73% of people who watch on-demand programming, they're watching recommended content. Now, that's pretty cool. You know, that's how they can come in contact with different shows out there that they may not have known what was even available on the streaming platform. And I tell you, I've talked about this before. This trend is only going to grow more and more. Think about what happened earlier this year. The sci-fi series, 12 Monkeys. Had a chance to interview them. If you uh, want to check out my interview with the cast of the 12 Monkeys, you can uh, check it out on my YouTube channel or download it on iTunes. Uh, but enough enough of glossing me. But what they did this last season, they binge watched season three in three days. So I believe the on Friday, it was like five hours. Um, Saturday, it was four hours. And then I believe on Sunday, it was another four or five hours. But I enjoyed it. I want to get to the meat and bones. I don't like waiting for things. But there are some purists out there who want to wait every week. I don't know why. (laughs) Just get it over with. Get to the good part. And that's what we're seeing now when it comes to on-demand content. Now, what does this mean to the major networks out there? Well, you could just look and see what's going on with their on-demand streaming service. CBS has it. I believe Fox has it. Uh, Sci-Fi Network has it. Uh, NBC 
they have these on-demand conscious because they're realizing that this is the trend. And I believe in the foreseeable future, the only thing we're going to be having live is um, news, uh, news channels, and sports. Other than that, I think everything is going to go to an on-demand content. If you think back to Back to the Future Part 2, remember when uh, Marty's daughter, when she came home, or it might have been the son, when they said, I wanted to watch this, 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 this. And remember on the screen, it had all these different channels right there. That was the future. And we're starting to see that now. So brace up for it, folks. And we're going to try to get some of our good friends over at the Consumer Technology Association to, to talk about this trend because I think it's going to be really going to be to be major. All right, let's talk about some more things uh, that are making headlines in the tech world. Now, when I grew up, and Sean, you may have remembered this too, when it came to getting electronics, you might have heard this in the news. There's only one store you can go to. And Sean, you know what it was. It was Radio Shack. Well, Radio Shack last week, it was announced that they are going into Chapter 11. So what does this mean for the the different Radio Shack stores that are out there? Well, there are many out there, locally owned stores that wanted to keep the keep the brand alive, keep Radio Shack going. And I think it should be going because I remember uh, Tandy was the brand that, that they had back then. I think it ended up being Texas Instrument. I may be, may be wrong. Well, a judge ruled last week, Radio Shack won a preliminary hearing. Now, this was in the Wall Street Journal. It talked about that they can escape Chapter 11 with 28 stores or fewer. Now, that's, that's huge. They thought they were going to lose all, all the stores. But it's good. Good for the brand. You know, some nostalgia out there. What were some of your favorite Radio Shack moments? I remember going there because, you know, my, my background is in music. Whenever uh, my, my chords would, would short, I would go to the local Radio Shack, buy some chords, um, headphone adapters, you name it. You know, and if we don't have stores like that, I mean, we can go to the other electronic stores, but they don't have the selection that, that Radio Shack has. So I'm glad there's going to be some some local stores uh, around. And if you look at the trend when it comes to stores, we have a Circuit City uh, bit the dust a few years back, several years ago. Uh, Radio Shack is Best Buy Next. You know, the, the thing that sucks about the whole story is that people lose their jobs when it comes to this. And we don't want anybody to lose their jobs. It's, it's hard enough trying to make a living in, in, in where we live at and to have people lose their Hopefully, they see the writing on the wall, start taking up some STEM classes, learn about robotics, you know, bio biometrics. We're going to talk about that later on the show. But we're starting to, to, to see this trend too and don't forget the story that came out last week about the iphone 8 almost a grand they think it's going to go for a thousand dollars are you going to get that i mean don't go for the fool's gold you know there's people out there that always want the latest and the greatest but if your phone is you know doing everything you needed to do you know, why incur that expense? And again, I'm not in your business. I know you tell me, Paul, mind your business, but I'm just giving you a little bit of advice. For someone who is in the electronics business, in the technology business, I'm telling you, there's not that big a difference when it comes to 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 different uh, devices out there. You know, I had a Samsung Galaxy S7 Edge. I got it a little over a year ago. And what happened in that time? They released the Galaxy 8. Am I going to run out and get that one? No. But if Samsung wants me to do a product review, I will greatly take it off your hands to do a product review. But just be careful out there. Don't don't chase the fool's gold. Really research the device. See if it fits your needs and what you're doing. Man, I just don't get it. Say, oh, look what I got. I got an iPhone 8. In a couple of years, who's going to care? But $1,000. And, and this is where different carriers get you. Oh, it's only going to be about 39 bucks a month. Oh, I can I can take care of that. Oh, but don't forget, you want to get some insurance because you don't want anything to happen to that $1,000 device. Then it goes almost $50 a month. So now you have about a $60 or $50 cellular bill, but now a $60 or $50 device bill. That's $100. If you want to know what you can do with that extra money, talk to my man Dave Ramsey. He's here on the station weekdays. He can tell you to do the extra income. 
if you're just itching to use it. Hey, when we get back, cybersecurity, biometrics, we're going to be talking about that, especially that's on our mind now when it came to the breach uh, of Equifax. You know, that kind of scared, scared me. You know, they report our credit history the ones. And because of that breach, we may have derogged credit because of that. And now they're telling us, oh, get some monitoring. No, why don't you do your job and make sure that all of our stuff is safe? Don't, don't put it off on us. That's your job. And my next guest coming up in, in the second segment of the show after the break, he's going to talk about the innovation that his company is doing to make sure that you and I have our identity safe and are protected. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back after these messages. 